Welcome back. We had some overcast skies today, and Mitch, I must say it was a beautiful day today with temperatures at 81 degrees, winds going west at 8 miles per hour, and the humidity at 47% and the barometric pressure at 29.99 and steady. Now for our area conditions, it looks like Carlisle had some partly cloudy skies at 81. Washington and Princeton both had 81 as their temperature. Washington had overcast skies. Princeton has mostly cloudy. Now for Bridgeport, Illinois, mostly cloudy at a high of 80 degrees. Now as we move into our U.S. temperature map, all over temperatures are in the average range. Along the Atlantic coast, temperatures are in the 70s to the 80s and also 90s, with Pittsburgh's at 77 and Georgetown, South Carolina at 71 degrees. Now for the northern, central, and also southern plains, temperatures are in the 50s through the 90s with Rapid City, South Dakota at 59 degrees and also Dallas, Texas at, <clears throat> at 89 degrees. Now in the west, temperatures are a little bit cooler um, in the 60s through the 70s with Longview, Washington at 67 degrees and Las Vegas, Nevada at 89 degrees. As we take a look at our frontal map, not really much going on. We do have the stationary front um, going through the uh, four corner region. Um, as you guys can see, two thirds of the U.S. is experiencing some dry conditions. Now this is due to these high pressure systems in the northern and also central plain. Now for the east, as you guys can see, there's a trough of low pressure along the Carolina coast. Now, the, now this is what's causing these few showers and also <clears throat> heavy rain showers for parts of that area. Now as we move into our area, we have this cold front right here. It's pretty weak. It's causing some, uh, it will bring, accumulate some cloud conditions for tonight and also bring us a chance of rain showers for tomorrow night. Now for tonight's conditions, partly cloudy skies with west-northwest winds going 5 to 10 miles per hour. Then for tomorrow, partly sunny skies, calm winds at a high of 73. Then for tomorrow night's con conditions, a 40% chance of showers, mostly cloudy, calm winds with a low of 48. Now for our extended forecast, our weekend looking pretty good. Friday, mostly sunny with a high of 68 and a low of 44. Then Saturday, mostly sunny with a high of 67 and a low of 47. Then Sunday, partly sunny with a high of 69 and a low of 49. So it looks like fall-like temperatures will be ushering the new season in, Mitch. Well, I think we're all ready for it. Thanks, Danny. Indianapolis Colts coach Jim Caldwell is trying to paint a positive picture, even with his team off to an 0-2 start. Cody Cully is here now with more. Cody? Well, Mitch, despite the Colts' rough start, the coach isn't ready to concede that the things are as grim as they appear. I'll have the details when we return. Coming up this week on WVUT's 22 Magazine, fundraising for this year's United Way campaign is underway. Executive Director Bob Morowski will be in the studio to discuss where the money goes and services they provide. Then in our second segment, Pat Hutchinson with the Vincennes Education Foundation talks about the group's mission and a pair of fundraising events coming up later this month. That's the next time on 22 Magazine, Saturday night at 7.30 on WVUT. He sung more opera roles than any tenor in history. Now, the legendary Placido Domingo tells us which were his personal best. My favorite roles. And why? In real life, I want to be happy. But on the stage, it's wonderful to suffer. Join Placido Domingo on an intimate journey through his favorite roles. Only on great performances. Colts coach remains upbeat despite team's 0-2 start. Good evening everyone for WVUT Sports, I'm Cody Cully. The Indianapolis Colts returned to practice this afternoon as they got ready for their Sunday night game with the Pittsburgh Steelers. The Horseshoes are off to an 0-2 start for the first time since 1998, but coach Jim Caldwell remains upbeat and remains confident that this team has, still has a good season. I think oftentimes people look at it as, like, as if the sky is falling. Uh, certainly it's difficult times right now, but nevertheless, um, we still got a lot of, a lot of time to get it done. I think the last time, one of the times we were, last time we had a losing season around here, um, if you look at statistically, um, they started out 2-0. and um, So, you know, there are no guarantees, right? And uh, what our guys have to do is just kind of keep 
looking at the things that we can get corrected, work on those things, get ourselves where we're playing good, solid Colts football the way we know how to play. The Colts and the Steelers have not played since 2008 when the Colts went into Heinz Field and pulled out a 24-20 victory. In other news from Colts camp, the team has signed free agent safety Stevie Brown. Brown played high school at football at Columbus East before collegiately at Michigan. He was a seventh round draft choice of the Oakland Raiders in 2010 and played in 15 games for the Raiders last season. To make room for Brown on the roster, the Colts waived Indianapolis native Darren Evans. The NFL sent a memo Wednesday to all 32 teams warning of fines, suspensions, and loss of draft picks if the league determines players faked injuries during a game. The memo comes two days after there was a speculation the Giants' Deion Grant faked an injury against the Rams during the Monday night game. The NFL is warning of disciplinary action. Rams quarterback Sam Bradford said it was obvious the Giants were just buying time with St. Louis running in a no-huddle offense. The Indiana Fever opened the WNBA's Eastern Conference Finals tomorrow night against Atlanta at Conseco Fieldhouse. It is the fourth time in franchise history that the Fever have reached the Conference Finals. Indiana will have their hands full with the Dream, who finished third in the Eastern Conference during the regular season. Atlanta has won all four games against the Fever this year. The St. Louis Cardinals are doing their best to catch the Braves, beating the Mets easily 11-6. Albert Pujols went 4 for 5 with a run batted in, but the Cardinals really put it away in the 7th with a bases loaded pitch hitter Adron Chambers hit a bases clearing triple, part of a 6 run inning to put the Cards on top. The Cardinals have won 3 in a row and remain within reach of Atlanta in the NL wild card race. After losing a walk off Marlins homer Monday night, the Atlanta Braves rebounded with a shutout win in Miami 4 zip. Rookie pitcher Randall Delgado pitched five innings of shutout ball for his first major league win and the bullpen handled the rest. Freddie Freeman hit his 20th home run. Alex Gonzalez hit his 15th but left the game in the sixth inning with a strained right calf. His status is day to day. Atlanta holds a slim two and a half game lead in the NL wild card chase. The lead was 10 and a half back on August 25th. ESPN is reporting the Big 12 Conference Board of Directors are planning to meet in the coming days and will address the leadership of Commissioner Dan Beebe in a way to get the remaining members to make a long-term commitment to the conference. The source said no decision has been made on Beebe status at this point. Another source, however, described Beebe status as tenuous at best. The board's planned meeting comes after the Pac-12 decided against expansion Tuesday night. Meanwhile, in the Southeastern Conference, dismissed media reports Tuesday that it had informally agreed to add Missouri to the conference and move Auburn to the SEC East. The Birmingham News report that a majority of SEC presidents have endorsed an agreement adding that Missouri would become the conference's 14th member after the recent announcement of Texas A&M as its 13th member. SEC Commissioner Charles Bloom says the conference has not agreed formally or informally to accept any institution other than Texas A&M, and there have not been conference discussions regarding changes in the divisional alignments. It's now time for our play of the day. We head out to Arizona where the Diamondbacks are hosting the Pittsburgh Pirates Tuesday. With runners on the corners and two out, Arizona's Paul Goldschmidt drives this one to right, but Pirates' Garrett Jones lays out and makes the fantastic catch to end the inning. Take another look, Mitch, as Jones stretches out to prevent the run from scoring. That effort is good enough for our play of the day. That's great. Thanks, Cody. The military's Don't Ask, Don't Tell policy officially ended this week. Coming up next, we'll meet one soldier who waited for the day to come to come out to his parents. That's next. Stay with us.
next time on Nature. We really do need to use high-speed video to get a look at what's going on. They really are some of the most elite athletes of the animal world. For some gay service members, coming out didn't just mean revealing their sexual orientation to comrades in arms. Jeannie Mose has that story. For months, he was the headless soldier, identity withheld, and then in one nerve-wracking phone call, kind of call that makes you exhale, this gay soldier stationed in Germany hey, Daddy. came out to his father in Alabama. Can I tell you something? Yeah. Will you love me, period? Yes. He had waited till the moment that the repeal of don't ask, don't tell officially went into effect. Dad, I'm gay. Okay. Like, always have been, I've known since forever. I, I mean, I didn't want you to find out any other way. After two low-key OKs, we still didn't know how his father really felt. You still love me? I still love you, son. Are you okay, Dad? Okay, our relationship. What had changed was the 21-year-old soldier's relationship with himself. He started using YouTube as a way to gradually come out. For months, this is how he showed himself in videos, mostly from the neck down, never revealing his face. In video after video, he documented his coming out uh, process. I told my girlfriend, and hardest, hardest thing I've ever done. But even on Facebook, he hid his face, even hid behind his beer. When he came out to a soldier friend, he put that on YouTube. I'm gay. Is it? Okay. I could give a rat's ass. Hey, love is love. Love is love, but tell that to your dad. I thought he was going to be hurt. Um, my dad only has, has one son, and it's me. Air Force Airman Randy Phillips told us it went better than he'd expected. Well, my son. Uh, very proud of you. Okay. Yes, sir. Whew. Oh, my Lord. Wait a minute, Randy. Not so fast. There is one other matter. You want to tell Mom for me? When Randy called his mother... It was just a lot of silence. But Randy says at least she wasn't angry. His parents didn't ask, but he did tell. It's great to see your head, finally. Finally, the headless soldier has a head, and his dad didn't bite it off. Dad, I'm gay. Jeannie Mos, CNN. You still love me? I still love you, son. New York. That's all for this evening. For Danny Taborn and Cody Cully, I'm Mitch Columbi. Join us again tomorrow. Good night. This is WVUT Vincennes.